you. Hello and good morning from my living room. I'm not showing you much of the living room because it is very messy since I've not been at home very much the last few days. I've been making the most of la canicule, which means heat wave. Actually, I've been trying to escape my apartment because it's quite hot in here. Anyway, today, as you've seen from the title of this video, I'm going to take you with me to the medieval city of Meaux which is famous for brie, a type of brie, brie de mou, which is a cheese, of course, and also moutade de mou, which is a kind of mustard. Of course, everyone's heard of mustard from Dijon, but mo mustard is quite unique in of itself. So without further ado, let's uh, depart. Around 45 minutes from the centre of the City of Lights by train, Mo lies to the east of Paris. The town traces its roots back to Roman times, when it was known as Latinum. The other antiquity nickname for the city was Meldi, which gave rise to the fact that inhabitants of the quaint city today are called Meldois. If you want to sample some Brie de Meaux while in the town, then there are many local restaurants which serve up Brie de Meaux in croque monsieurs. You can opt to have one with jambon, i.e. ham, or simply the cheese on its own, which is equally as delicious. One of the biggest draws of Mo is its old town. I know that I probably say this too often about the many pretty towns that litter the French countryside, but walking the streets, lanes, and small parks around Mo are quite literally like stepping back in time. And especially so if you head away from the main shopping street and towards the river or into the little residential alleyways that dot the city. If you're looking for an authentic French experience without leaving the Ile-de-France region, then you'll find it here in Meaux. Sip on an espresso in a roadside cafe or grab a baguette from the boulangerie and head to a local park. Many of the most interesting things to do in Mo are concentrated in the old city part of town, which is best explored on foot and still remains encased in a defensive wall dating back over 2,000 years to this very day. In the very heart of Old Town Mo, you'll find a set of ecclesiastical buildings that together outline the shape of a bishop's mitre. As I previously mentioned, in the very heart of the city, much of the action is centred around a historic cathedral dating back many centuries. Cathedral Saint Etienne de Meaux, which is Stephen in English, is Roman Catholic Church and dates all the way back to the 12th century, though the building itself wasn't officially completed until well into the 17th century. The exact reasons for why the cathedral took so long to build are varied, but insufficient funds, occupation by the English, and the Hundred Year War all hindered building efforts. Like other European religious buildings that took literal centuries to complete, the resulting church is a beautiful blend of architectural styles. Romanesque and Gothic features can be found side by side if you examine the structure carefully enough. Mo Cathedral is completely free to visit, and I highly recommend venturing inside if you get the chance if only to enjoy the ornate carvings to be found inside, as well as the high vaulted ceilings. Just behind the cathedral, 
the Bossue Garden is free to visit. A fairy tale garden in the heart of a busy town, Le Jardin Bossuet was first installed in the 17th century under the direction of Bishopric of the time, Dominique Seguier. It was created in line with other French gardens of the era and comprises of flowing flower borders, green spaces and peaceful contemplative spaces as well. The garden is named for Mo inhabitant, I hope I'm saying this right, Jacques Benig Lignel Bossuet, a theologian and French bishop who is best known for his sermons and was a well-respected French orator. He lived and worked in Meaux between the 17th and 18th centuries and has been celebrated in the town and beyond ever since. As I discover more and more of Ile de France region, I'm increasingly pleasantly surprised by the sheer volume of rural countryside walks on offer in the area. After all, from ancient forests to lesser known river trails, there's no shortage of stunning vistas to discover. And one of my favorite more recent discoveries is that of the Canal de Meaux à Charifère, a delightful waterway between Meaux and Ebly. Stretching 12.6 kilometers and fairly level with a walking route by the water level all the way between the towns, construction of the canal began in the 19th century, though the waterway was not in use until some time later. There are three locks to see en route. Afterwards, you can take the train from Ebley back to Paris. Thank you so much for listening and please tune in for the next vlog by subscribing, liking and commenting if you so wish.